Okay, this video lecture is in meiosis. I suggest you watch the other one that I have on mitosis first because a lot of these same steps repeat and use the same terms. So starting with meiosis here. Now when we're talking about meiosis, we want to be mindful of comparing it to mitosis. And we're going to see these comparisons done quite a bit. Mitosis is starting with this diploid cell, which is a normal cell in your body, and it's making two identical copies. Meiosis here, we're taking that same initial start to the cell, and we're going to end up with actually four cells in the end that each have half of the total genetic material. Let's do another comparison here where we see our parent cell. We have this replication phase, and from that replication phase, we can go to mitosis, which you can see here is forming two identical copies of the parent cell. Or meiosis here, we're forming four total cells, each with half of the total genetic material. So, uh, some of the terms. Sister chromatids is one. This refers to, e to either of the two identical copies, chromatids, formed by replication from a single chromosome, with both copies joined together with this centromere. So, here's our chromosome here. Here's our centromere, that center location, also represented here. Our sister chromatids are those two things, two, cro two chromosomes joined together here in that um, centromere. Together these make the sister chromatid. Now there's also something called daughter chromosomes. Now these are paired chromatids or sister chromatids eventually separate, keyword here separate, and become daughter chromosomes. At the end of mitosis, daughter chromosomes are properly um, spaced out and allocated to the different two daughter cells. Together they're sister chromatids forming a chromosome, and that's represented here, or separated their daughter chromosomes. So I know this is, just sounds a little confusing, the difference between daughter chromosomes and sister chromatids. The key part here, the sister chromatids are actually joined, and the daughter chromosomes are separated. So getting into what's the purpose of meiosis? Well, for sexual reproduction and for plants, seed formation, it's basically to get to the next generation. Uh, spreading out the, the genes to then produce either, in this case, it'd be pollen grains, it could be um, forming immature seeds, uh, to be able to make a new plant, or a new person in this case. So first we have to understand two um, key terms here. First one is somatic cells. These are any cell in a living organism that is not a reproductive cell. Here we have um, an endoderm lime, a mesoderm lime, an ectoderm lime, all the somatic cells, they go through and they can form these stem cells, and they're forming lung tissue, the pancreas, the heart, or red blood cells, skin, or neurons, all these are somatic cells. They are also diploid, meaning they contain two sets of chromosomes, one from each parent. So one from mom, one from dad. If these were plant cells, it could be leaves and roots and shoots and stems, and they would also have one chromosome from the male plant and one chromosome from the female plant. We talk about gametes. This is, these are single cells produced by adult organisms that are specialized for mating and only have half the number of chromosomes, and thus we call them haploids. They have a single set of unpaired chromosomes. So to form a zygote, we need a sperm cell and an egg cell to come together, and this is the first cell of a new individual, this zygote here. Here we see the ovules in a plant, here we see pollen grains. If these two come together, that's forming the fruit here. These, are, an example, would be tomatoes. Looking a little bit closer at comparing the two, haploid is usually represented with just the letter N, and diploid is 2N. Hap haploid uh, sperm fertilizes a haploid egg. The resulting diploid zygote, myself up here, diploid zygote receives one copy of each gene from mother and one from father. So here we see the example here, a haploid egg and a haploid sperm come together to form the diploid zygote. This is going to be the start of the new individual. Same thing here, haploid sperm, haploid egg forming a new individual also. And this is diploid, one copy from mom, one copy from dad. So our two divisions of meiosis, one cell div divides into two, and then each of those divide again, resulting in four total cells. So unlike mitosis, where we were forming two identical copies, here we're forming four unique cells. 
through very similar phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase 1, and then the same thing repeats. Prophase, metaphase, and anaphase, and telophase all represented with 2. And we'll go into these in a little bit more detail. Starting with prophase 1, chromosomes coil become shorter and thicker, nuclear envelope and nucleolus dissociate to break apart, chromatids can be seen, centromeres form, and have microtubules attached. Kind of similar to prophase um, in mitosis, seeing that condensing here of the chromosomes, we could see our centrioles developing, the chromosomes are condensing, the nuclear is breaking down, and this term crossing over is important. During prophase one, crossing over can occur. This is a very important thing that happens in prophase one. It's a process where homologous chromosomes pair up with each other and exchange different segments of their genetic material to form recombinant chromosomes. What does this mean? Well, we have homologous chromosomes, and these are just could be the same chromosome, one for example, and they line up next to one another. But what's crossing over is because these are homologous, meaning they essentially encode for the same thing, one could be from mom, one could be from dad. Crossing over meaning a section could break off this chromosome and rejoin here, and this is what's causing, or what we call, crossing over, because a piece is crossing over. Here we have a um, white and a black um, chromosome. Here we get crossing over, and we see we get a kind of a striped appearance. We get a white and a black, and a white, and a black, and a white, and a black. This is crossing over. I mean, these were unique genetics separated out, now they're kind of joined together. So this is important because it happens on metaphase. The chromosomes align at the equator and spindle fibers become apparent. Metaphase, remember they're lining up that metaphase plate, that equator of the cell here is lining up. Remember, this is metaphase one. So what it looks like on a real world image here, you can see everything lined up distinctly through the dye. Anaphase one is chromosomes migrate to the poles. Again, we're getting the pulling apart of our chromosomes. Now the centromeres are not broken here. That's an important aspect to keep in mind. They are still attached. The centromeres are still attached, but now if we got this one from mom and this one from dad, these get pulled apart. Here we notice a little crossing over did occur. So anaphase looks like that pulling apart of those chromosomes. Telophase one and cytokinesis. This is a weak formation of the nucleus because remember they're going to divide again. You see, initially we're starting to have a nucleus starting to form, but that's going to slowly divide and break apart more here. So division two, similar but not the exact same process repeats. So be careful and mindful of what's different. So here in prophase two, chromosomes become shorter. They never really completely dissociated, but they become shorter, more condensed. Spindle fibers are forming. Here in metaphase two, they're lining up again. And an important part here, between metaphase 1 and metaphase 2, if you look at these images, there's three here. This one and this one look very similar. This one looks distinctly different. We notice here we're going to get separation at the centromere. Here we're just going to migrate the chromosomes. We notice this is evident in metaphase 2, same with this one. This is metaphase 1. The centromeres will not be broken in metaphase 1. Again, metaphase two here, a little bit harder to see on some of these stained images. We get the sense for what that looks like. Everything kind of lined up on the um, equator region. Anaphase two, same thing happens. Our chromatids separate, allowing chromosomes to migrate to the poles. Important for anaphase two, we're actually breaking those centromeres, and those are actually migrating to the poles here. Telophase two and cytokinesis, the chromosomes become longer, new nuclear envelope develops, and nucleoli reappear. New cell walls develop between each of the four groups of chromosomes. Nuclear envelope forms around each set of chromosomes, and the cytoplasm divides. You can see we're getting distinct, four distinct cells that are forming. Uh, meiosis stage one and meiosis stage two. You can see kind of the comparison here. The key part here with meiosis, we're ending up with four cells in the end, each with half of the total genetic information. So to kind of give you a little bit of an animation of what's what's generally occurring. Notice everything lines up. We are just pulling them apart. Nothing was broken. Getting our formation, and this is for a single egg cell. So we'll talk about when we get to human development, egg cells are only technically one total mature true egg. But you can kind of see and replay this again, what's going on, how things are migrating, what is these are just moving across, no centimeters broken, and then when they do get broken. 
polar bodies, we'll talk about that when we do human reproduction. We're seeing here the centromeres are actually being broken. And for the formation of eggs, a single egg, there's only one true egg that's formed. Again, important in a good quiz question between mitosis and meiosis. Here's a great comparison uh, between the two. So mitosis, again, forming those two total cells. Um, meiosis forming those four. Again, being able to compare and contrast these two is an important aspect to show understanding. And if you want a couple more links to some videos, here is a couple that I have provided to you.